building a very old horizontal steam engine. In part 4, I'm going to show how I clean up the parts. Now this might be self-explanatory, but it's not enough to just dismantle the engine and wipe over the parts ready for painting. You have to have a close look at everything, because unfortunately, you do find problems when you remove the paint. Things that the paint covers can suddenly come to the fore. In the previous one of my resurrection videos, one of the engines had a real major problem with the steam chest, and this wasn't apparent until I removed the paint, then quite a lot of parts fell off the engine. Here I'm dismantling the steam chest, and the steam chest looks quite good, nothing seems to be broken on it. And here is the valve rod gland. I'll have a closer look at all the components. These are the crosshead guides, that's the steam chest cover, and this again is the steam chest itself. I'm cleaning this up using a flapper wheel on my mini drill. This is not very brutal at all, unlike the grinding wheel as you see here, which is quite brutal. I'm using this to remove some lumps on the casting. I noticed these when I first looked at the engine, because they were never removed before the engine was painted. It's not a major problem, but I do like things to look pretty. And so by grinding off the lumps, it should give a much better finish to the engine when it's finally painted. There are quite a few of these lumps and bumps on the castings, so I'm spending a few minutes just cleaning them up, and the engine will look better when it's fully painted. This is the underside of one of the crosshead guides, so these bumps won't show very much anyway, but I'm still cleaning them up with the grinder. When using grinding wheels, even small ones like this, it's highly advisable to wear eye protection because if this wheel was to shatter, the parts would hit you in the face with considerable speed, and this could cause severe damage, not to mention the time you'd have to spend in A&E getting it fixed. In fact, the only benefit of being hit in the eye with a piece of grinding wheel is the fact that with the eye patch, you could probably land a role as a pirate in a pantomime or a similar production, so it wouldn't all be bad news. Here I'm using a needle file to clean up the parts. And once again, it is advisable to wear eye protection when doing this. When these needle files fracture, the parts shoot out at a great rate of knots, and they can hit you in the eye also. This is a very thin metal cutter, and this is also good for getting right into the corners. I'm sorry about all the health and safety warnings on this one, but I really would hate for anyone following these directions to be injured. And here are the collection of parts that I've just cleaned up. I still have both my eyes working, and all my fingers. Flush with success, I thought I'll have a quick look and see how bad the pitting is on the connecting rod, and yes, it's pretty bad. So I thought I'd have a quick look at the slide valve. The slide valve wasn't in very bad condition, but it's a good idea while we're at this stage to reface it. I'm just rubbing it back and forth on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper that has some machine oil on it. And it's a good idea to rub it in this direction, which is in the opposite direction to the way that the valve normally moves in the valve chest. Slide valves generally wear in, not out, but they can get pitted, as can the port face. So I'll have a quick look at the valve face on the cylinder now. Miraculously, the valve face on this engine is not in bad condition. So here I'm using a piece of wood and again some wet to dry sandpaper and a little oil to clean up the valve face. And as you can see, it is pretty good. Cast iron is a very hard wearing material for steam engine cylinders, but it does have one minor disadvantage, and that is if you leave water in the steam chest or the cylinder, it will go rusty. And if you have rust on the port face, this will score the valve, which in turn will then score the port face. Over the years, I have seen some very bad examples of this but luckily on this engine the port face is in good order. The port face no longer has that just machine look and it's a little bit tarnished, but it will be fine. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.